Hello friends, let's discuss current affairs and today's first question is on something that's pretty topical. Which country's surveillance balloon over the Atlantic Ocean was recently shot down by the United States military fighter jets? Chinese balloon, that's a balloon my friends. Uh, they shot down four of them and um, the US government has admitted that at least two of them were benign, miss harmless. But the one that you see on the screen there is, uh, you know, was the size of three buses, three school buses. Now that must be pretty large. Now this was shot down, uh, you know, after it had traversed the whole of, you know, the United States, that is from West Coast to East Coast. Uh, so, you know, they found some uh, surveillance equipment over it, um, radio antenna equipment and all. Now, the thing is, uh, the US has said that this was all, um, you know, surveillance or intelligence collection equipment, while the, the Chinese have maintained that this was all for meteorological research. Meteorological research, that is weather research. Now, the kind of equipment found here on this particular balloon isn't uh, something that would match uh, the needs of meteorological research. They go beyond that and that's what the US is claiming. The US is saying that this is all for surveillance, you know, surveillance of military sites, spying essentially on military sites, yeah, reconnaissance and all that stuff. So how big was this balloon? Uh, well, you see this here. Hmm? This is the balloon, okay, and look at the payload. This is the payload you see basically right there, yeah, hanging below it. The payload was about 30 meters, anywhere between 20 and 30 meters. That would be what about uh, somewhere around 42 to, yeah, uh, 46 to 60 feet, 62 feet. That's a lot of it, man. Uh, yeah, so 90 feet, I'm so sorry, <laughs> 90 feet. Uh, so uh, 60 to 90 feet, that's a lot of it. Mm? And uh, you see, this is the Statue of Liberty. You know, this was given gift by the people of France to the people of America. Why? Some other day we'll look at that. 93 meter tall. This is um, the pay was, payload was one third of it actually. Okay, so always this huge thing about the Chinese stuff. Uh, one report has said that the Chinese are past masters, that is, they have been experts at releasing these kinds of balloons in different parts of the world, including one that was spotted in India way back in 1978. It was spotted over Alabad, okay, Prayagraj. In those days, it was called Alabad. Now we call it Prayagraj. So 1978 is some time, my friends, isn't it? Some 45 years back, it was found over Prayagraj. Anyway, these kinds of things are pretty ordinary, pretty common, and it's just that the Chinese have been found. Yes. Um, would you want to know about um, each of these countries? Just the capital this time around, North Korea, Pyongyang. Hmm? Iran's Tehran. Moscow is where the government of Russian Federation sits. China, we all know, is Beijing. The capital is Beijing. Cuba, Havana. And in the case of Cuba, President Miguel Canel Diaz. That's the president of Cuba. Only the third president since 1959. Um, there was the first guy was Fidel Castro, followed by his brother Raul Castro, and now Miguel Canel Diaz. Okay, there we go. And by the way, this F-22 is nicknamed the Raptor. The fighter aircraft is nicknamed the Raptor. That's it. Who broke the record for the most Grammy wins of any artist uh, winning? Uh, her or his 32nd prize, her actually. Beyonce Nows, this is the most, uh, you know, most, uh, I would say, beautiful Beyonce Nows. And Beyonce uh, is considered the greatest, you know, one of the greatest uh, musicians of, woman musicians of all time. She also happens to be the highest earning black musician of all time. Highest earning black woman musician of all time. Yeah, that's important. Woman musician. Okay. 
and um, you know she's won 32 Grammys. That's what Grammy is the Oscar of the movie, you no know, film, you know. Sorry, um, Grammy is the um, Oscar of the music industry. Okay, see Oscars film. Okay, Grammys. We are talking about the U.S. actually, yeah, music. Then we have Tony Tony Awards. They are given for theater, dramas, and all that. And uh, then we have Emmy, which is for television, which is for TV. These are called the four awards, the four highest awards in the four major disciplines of uh, entertainment and uh, culture. Hmm. So, Browns, if you would listen to her, if you would be interested, I would suggest two albums. One is Lemonade, cons uh, considered her best album. It's also her highest selling album, Lemonade. And the second one is Everything is Love. It's really good stuff, my friends. This album is Lord, Everything is Love, sorry. Everything is Love. Great stuff. So I'll just give you three Grammy Awards this time. Okay, 65th Grammy Awards, 65th Grammy Awards. We'll write only three categories. So 65th Grammy. Okay. Record of the year. Record means album. Record of the year. LP. Long LP record. Long playing record. Okay. Um, Record of the year about damn time. Yeah, time by Lizzo, the performer Lizzo. Then, album of the year. Mm, Harry's house. Harry's house. Harry's House by Harry Styles. Yeah, Harry Styles. Okay, the third category, best song of the year. That is song of the year. Oh, it is a terrific song, my friends. Just like that. Please listen to it. That's the title. Just like that. The guy who wrote it is Brian, uh, no, not Brian, yeah, sorry, not Brian, uh, you know, this morning I was discussing this, it's Bonnie, it's like Bonnie, Bonnie M singer, yeah, but it's not, diff th uh, sorry, just like that, JLT we call it, yeah, um, Bonnie, Many people say when I say many when I say Bonnie, many people would say music lovers would say Bonnie M. Bonnie M. This is that is B O N E Y. This is Bonnie B O N N I E. Bonnie Riot. Bonnie Riot. Singer, writer Bonnie Riot. No, no, it's Rate Bonnie Rate. I'm so sorry. Hey, you know what? There is this pronunciation of a word that most people get incorrect. We often say race platform is dias, it is days. This is the right spelling. This is the right spelling. How do you pronounce it? Days. Day. Days. Say that. This is days. Okay. When you say dias, the spelling changes, which is incorrect spelling. Dias. Dias. This is incorrect. So it's days. That's this is the pronunciation, this is the spelling. That's how this is R A I T T rate instead of riot. Okay. Oh, I love music, and I'm sure that most of you love music. Mm -hmm. But you should listen to this song JLT by Bonnie Rate. Uh, which nations were affected by a powerful earthquake that resulted in a huge loss of life? We both know, we all know Syria and Turkey had lost. Uh, had were greatly impacted by this earthquake and I have a couple of images for you guys 
I'm going to tell you how earthquakes happen. But before this, this is where the earthquake struck. See, this is the Anatolian plate, Arab African plate, and Arabian plate. So, what is this? What are these images? See, the earthquake struck um, on um, you know about 18 kilometers north of this place, Gajian Tap, Gajian Tap, and this is is northwest of Gajian Tap. This is considered one of the oldest cities in Turkey. Okay, 7.8 on the Richter scale, that's a lot of, you know, magnitude, a lot of intensity and um, the magnitude, what is magnitude, what is intensity, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you how these things that you see on the screen plates work and I'm going to tell you about how earthquakes, what are the things that you should know about earthquakes, what are the words. Okay, let's look at this. See. Uh, this earthquake you have read a lot, you have seen that about for more than 40,000 people have died in this earthquake. Now, what's mentioned is Anatolian plate, the African plate and the Arabian plate. And the right image, you find the names of a lot of plates, Eurasian plate, Indian plate there, you know, in red there, the Arabian plate, the Caribbean plate, the African, the Pacific plate, plenty of plates. So what's a plate? A plate is a major chunk of rock, continuous rock. Now, see the earth's surface from where you are seated, let's say you just look, look at the floor, you'll find either tiles or stones or something, some kind of, you know, flooring. The earth's crust is made of stone, isn't it? It's made of rock, technically rock, not stone, rock. Now, deep, a bit deeper down there is what is called a deeper, you know, a bigger slab of rock. The earth's surface is made of slabs of rock and each slab is a continuous, you know, continuous land, you know, uh, what to say, um, each slab is a continuous rock layer, it's a continuous rock layer. Let's say this is one rock layer, this paper, this is one rock layer, okay, otherwise we could deal this way, okay, my random essay, okay, this is, this is one rock layer, random shape. And this is another rock layer, this one, okay. Now, the earth's made of, of rock layers, this is simply called plates. It's a very large slab of rock. A plate is a large slab of rock, okay. Now, there are, there is this slab of rock on the continents and which is called, you know, which is, um, you know, which is like continental basically. And then there is oceanic right below in the oceans. You know, the thickness of this slab could be anywhere between 10 and 160 kilometers from deep inside, you know, um, slightly deep in, deeper from the surface. It's about, you know, in fact, the crust starts almost from about five kilometers or three kilometers from the where we are. So, you know, this particular, uh, what we say, the rock, you know, the, the plate, sorry. The plate, you know, is spread across, the plates are spread across the earth, under the ocean and over the, in the, on the continents. Now, all these plates, they are located above a very semi-liquid layer, like called asthenosphere. Asthenosphere. It's a gummy layer. It's a gummy layer. It's a semi-liquid layer asthenosphere when you pronounce this it is sf not sp sf asthenosphere this is a semi liquid kind of layer okay it's a rubbery gooey you know gummy kind of layer so when there is a plate when there is a rock layer and below this there is a gooey layer obviously it could you know it would move a bit it would move now all these plates you see on the right there you find plenty of plates, Indian plate, African plate, Australian plate and all these things. Now, this is the latest classification of plates as per the United States Geological Survey. This is the latest, brand new latest classification of the Earth's plates. Now, what it effectively tells you is this entire thing is one continuous, you know, see this African plate, you see this here. This is one large slab of rock, egg rock. It's 
continuous rock below deep downside okay see this north american plate how big it is oh my god look at this this is all one rock okay now in the indian plate you see this again the indian plate is also very large now i want you to understand something here that these you know these layers this plate over this rock layer would move a bit here and there now at the margins of the plates let's say for example this plate you know there are three plates in this region arabian plate this is the arabian plate you can see this line here this is the african plate and this is the anatolian plate upper a eurasian plate so there are four plates at the top eurasian plate okay on which the black sea is located the whole of europe is located you see this eurasian plate and everything okay and then the anatolian plate african plate on which the whole of africa and surrounding areas are located arabian plate now the arabian plate here is pushing towards left it's pushing actually into what we say sorry north as a upar ja rahi it is pushing into the eurasian plate into the eurasian plate like this this is also here it's pushing into the european plate when it's pushing into the european plate what's happening is that the anatolian plate here is going towards west it's pushing west it's pushing west see this is not a small rock kind of thing take by you know you know it would run into something no when the plates which which are which long for you know thousands of kilometers you know sometimes hundreds of kilometers what happens is that when the plates rub against each other the plates simple way okay understanding the earthquake when the plates rub against each other they produce energy there is friction and friction it produces energy and because this happens deep inside the earth speak you know when the friction leads leads to release of energy and the energy comes to the surface of the earth in the form of waves in the form of waves so these waves are called seismic waves they are called seismic waves so let's say at the bottom somewhere inside the earth there is the origin of the earthquake it's called hypocenter hypocenter the exact point where the earthquake originates it's called hypocenter now waves travel in all directions like this from the hypocenter okay obviously there are waves so where are the space they will travel and when they travel like this okay from here let's say till here you know let's say this area this entire area these are all seismic waves these are seismic waves the exact point over the hypocenter but on the surface it is called epicenter it's called epicenter epi means outside outside center of the waves the earthquake so the exact point where the earthquake happens deep inside the earth is called hypocenter the exact point where the earthquake you know uh, the exact point above the hypocenter but on the surface of the earth is called epicenter it's called epicenter now this area is called focus area this entire area where seismic travel seismic waves travel is called focus area so seismic or earthquake waves this entire region where i have drawn lines this is the total focus area of the earthquake damage this is where the earthquake is felt in a deeper way in a much deeper way so this earthquake okay happened because the arabian plate is pushing northwards into the eurasian plate because it's pushing into the european plate like eurasian plate this plate anatolian plate is has to make way and is pushing west so when waves you know when when when, when plates move they you know they they kind of rub against each other they create friction and friction as i said to repeat myself is you know releases energy energy comes out in the form of waves seismic waves and which cause the earthquake so when they rub against each other the rock layer above it gets disturbed and the rock layer shakes and that is what the shaking of the earthquake you know that is why the shaking of the earthquake happens because the rock layer above the the about the friction against along the plates happens so this plates rub against each other 
the rock layer above it gets disturbed and it releases energy energy is in the form of seismic waves okay so i mean the exact point where the epicenter i mean where the earthquake is felt on the surface of the earth that there is epicenter is where the greatest damage happens usually the greatest damage happens right above the right above the hypocenter but on the surface of the earth which is called epicenter so the epicenter that is where gadgen top is this is the gadgen top area this is the town of gadgen top just northwest of 18 kilometers northwest of this place there was this huge you know epicenter earthquake you know the plate shook everything got devastated okay now this was at a much shallower depth this particular earthquake um this was about uh, 18 you know this was about um, what say 18 kilometers depth 18 kilometers depth uh, 17 or 18 kilometers of depth below the earth which is shallow considering that both earth, more most earthquakes originate above 30 kilometers down you know at a depth of more than 30 kilometers but this was quite shallow almost closer to the surface 18 kilometers only so when the closer it is the greater the shaking it is the greater the shaking okay on the surface so this is this was bad time earthquake struck at 4.17 in the morning 4.17 or 4.20 take 4.20 that's the time everyone's sleeping taking rest and this caught people unawares they could not even prepare but the time they realized that something went was not right they got caught in that and they a lot of people died my friends it's always sad yeah 41,000 people died, my friends. As of today's count, it could be more because if you look at Syria, um, Syria's uh, under the occupation of the US forces in the northwest of the country. Northwest is under Syria, uh, American forces, and uh, other parts of Syria, like Damascus, capital Damascus, and everything, where the earthquake was felt, um, has also seen devastation. But considering that Syria is under sanctions, uh, Western aid is not coming. No aid is going to Syria. Forget Western aid. No aid is going to Syria because now the West says that, you know, while we are waving this off, we are keeping a strict eye on who's sending stuff to Syria. So, you know, even where you come from is ground for discrimination. Suffering has no discrimination. See, it struck people everywhere, but the rich, poor, young, old, everyone suffered consequences. But unfortunately, the Americans and uh, the West actually believes that the people in Syria are less deserving than the people uh, of Turkey deserve aid. Yeah, than the people of Turkey who deserve aid. Uh, anyway, what's magnitude? Uh, now you see the magnitude of uh, the earthquake was 7.8. That's the magnitude on Richter scale. Is it? What is the scale called? Richter scale. Okay. So you could write this Richter scale measures um, energy released, energy released where the earthquake originated, where the earthquake originated. So this is where the magnitude earthquake originated here. This is what is, this is the magnitude. So what is energy release 7.8 on the Richter scale, which is a logarithmic uh, no logarithmic scale now on a log scale normally you know if it were 6.8 this would be 100 times more intense than 6.8 so it's 7.8 is very devastating my friends okay now what's intensity you could write this intensity also um refers to refers to size of the seismic waves size of the seismic waves recorded by recorded by a seismograph a seismograph seismic waves sometimes are longer deeper so it depends on that see the, the what most people have not seen is that Destruction is a function of the stability of the structures. People live in concrete structures, 
built on shaky ground obviously you know if it's made of poor quality of material cement and everything things will go bad so in turkey this is a major issue now building permits were given you know center left and right no one was supervising um, the construction of buildings the, there was because of corruption and other things political issues so what happened is that um, while the turkish association of engineers had written to the president of the country the prime minister and the housing ministry that look you know permissions are being given for building houses and everything on this particular fault line this called where you know fault line this area is basically so we believe that this earthquakes any earthquake could lead to maximum casualties because the construction being permitted by the ministry is not in line with the principles or the guidelines given out by you know the association of engineers and architects these plates keep moving all the time it's nothing new thousands of earthquakes happen every day most are imperceptible we can't we won't even feel that there is a there's been an earthquake now 110 years back 11 crore years back okay shall i tell you this okay let me tell you so the indian plate was here okay the indian plate was here and um, this was the eurasian plate okay the indian plate here when large landmass and around 110 million years back that is 1 million is 10 lakh so that's 11 crore years back 11 crore years back um the indian plate began to move northwest northeast northeast okay between the eurasian plate and the indian plate here india was here okay the indian plate was here between these two there was a water body called tethys sea samudra tethys sea this samudra became narrower as the indian plate began moving up okay the gap this eurasian plate the indian plate began moving up you know the gap between these two narrowed at around this time about say, 40 lakh years back around 40 lakh years back the indian plate thrusted into the eurasian plate it touched what about the water body in between the tethys the rock layer in the tethys sea all folded up and created the himalayas created the himalayas so the himalayas are called fold mountains because this is the rock layer in the tethys sea that folded up because of the you know the collision between the indian plate and the and the what we say the eurasian plate so the eurasian plate sorry the indian plate and the eurasian plate here it's you know rammed into this collided into this the water body in between <coughs> narrowed and all the rock layer folded up created built the himalayas the himalayas are relatively young just 4 million years that's about 40 lakh years um different sources give you different times as to when they you know they were formed and everything but more or less this is how it is now how do we know how are we confirmed with the idea that you know um, there was a water body here between the tethys sea between the indian plate and the eurasian plate well on the peaks of the himalayan mountains on the peaks of the himalayan mountains the fossils of the marine animals that lived in the tethys sea can be found yes on the peaks the tall peaks of the himalayan mountain range the fossils of the marine animals that lived in the tethys sea are found otherwise how can marine animals go up a mountain you need to understand this okay so there is another way of earthquake you know happening one is rubbing against each other sometimes one plate you know okay another thing is one plate goes down one plate goes down so let me tell you something more here let me think something more and let me clear this first 
Now there is this, oh, we don't have the exact map. Here, you have the Andaman Nicobar Islands, and this is uh, where the, you know, I think a bit, I cut it, uh, uh, never mind. So, just rough idea, okay. So these are Andaman Nicobar Islands and this is Indonesia. Uh, in fact, uh, the southernmost point of Andaman Nicobar Islands is 150 is Indra Point, which is 150 kilometers from Indonesia. Now think about this. There is this Indonesian plate here, Indian plate. You got it? Indian plate and Yapek Indonesian plate. Also called some people call it Sunda plate. See, not all the plates, you know, for example. There are some major plates, there are some minor plates. These are minor plates. Anatolian plate, Arabian plate are two minor plates. They are called Chota plates. Some are major plates. Like in Indian plate is a major plate. African major plate. Okay. Look at Pacific. It's a huge plate. This is the entire Pacific. Very, very big plate. Where is it, man? <laughs> this is um, the Pacific plate. Now, on December 26, 2004 the Indian plate and the Indonesian plate let's call it Sunda plate or Indonesian plate they collided they collided they collided along a fault line of 440 kilometers 440 kilometers they collided okay now the Indian plate went down this is called subduction it's called subduction the Indian plate as they collided it went down but Water needs equilibrium because the earthquake happened deep inside the earth, deep inside the ocean, this oceanic, you know, earthquake below the ocean. So what happened is when they were in equilibrium, two plates, water quantity, it went down, the Indian plate went down. So a big wave of water, a big wave of water came onto the other side to maintain equilibrium, but then Will the wave stop there? No, it creates another wave. So it's a ripple effect. It's a ripple effect. So what happened was this. The tsunami started. One big wave. Wave, 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 wave. It went till the tsunami reached till, you know, from here it started, let's say. It started here. It traveled like this. It traveled the whole of the African continent. At the speed of it started here and it reached, you know, India. This is where the earthquake struck and this is where the tsunami started. Sri Lanka, you know, Africa, a lot of places were impacted. So about 3 lakh people died on the, in this tsunami. 3 lakh. Hmm? Now, one more important thing is a tsunami travels at a speed of anywhere between 700 to 800 kilometers per hour. 700 to 800 kilometers. So when the tsunami travels, it travels very fast. The waves travel very fast and the speed takes out, takes out the boats and everything that comes in the wake. At the same time, it reaches the coast, at, as it reaches the coast, because there is continental shelf like this. Yeah, and there is water coming, the wave is coming because it meets the land, the, 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 because of this, you know, obstruction in the speed, you know, the waves as they slow down, they actually don't slow down, but the height of the wave, the depth decreases and what happens is that, you know, they take height. When they encounter, when water encounters a barrier, it takes height and height is what kills people because water has a lot of pressure and we are not talking of a small, you know, bucket of water or this cup of water kind of thing. We are talking of millions of tons of water and the pressure it mounts on the body. So what it lacks, you know, here in the ocean it has speed, but when it encounters land, the coastal area, it takes a huge you know, it takes a huge height, a big wave splashes on the surface and moves faster again. And that's what kills people. Yeah. It's a dangerous thing, man. More than 3 lakh people died at that time. 
So there are a lot of kinds of earthquakes. If an earthquake happens underwater, usually tsunami results. Not always, usually basically. Okay. Oh, we spent a lot of time on this. But I thoroughly enjoyed talking like these things. Hmm? So in this case, the Arabian plate is moving into the Eurasian plate, which is pushing the Anatolian plate to the west and the Anatolian plate went down. And this is how the earthquake happened here. Hmm? Parvej Musharraf, who passed away recently, was the president of Pakistan. This is Parvej Musharraf, the architect of Kargil. Yeah, he was born in Delhi. But, uh, you know, his family moved to Pakistan later. Hmm? I think he was four years old when, Pakistan, you know, when the independence happened, actually. We got independence. Anyway, Parvej Musharraf, president of Pakistan between 1999 and 2008. 1999 and 2008. I think I, I, I don't really want to spend on this time on this guy. Indonesia, the president is Joko Widodo. Joko Widodo. United Arab Emirates, Mohammed Zayed Al Nahyan. Ruling party, ruling. Oh. Uh, what is it? Ruling families, you know, surname. Maldives, Muhammad, sorry, Ibrahim, Muhammad Soleh. S O L E H. Bangladesh Prime Minister, we are talking of the leaders of these countries, leaders of the government. Bangladesh, um, Sheikh Hasina Wajid. Sheikh Hasina Wajid. Which Asian country celebrated 75 years of independence from British rule on 4th February and the theme Namo Namo Mata is stepped towards the century? That's Sri Lanka, my friends. Uh, Sri Lanka became independent on 4th February 1948. 1948 from the British, from the United Kingdom, from the United Kingdom. Okay. So. Mm. Same year, even Myanmar got independence. 1948, Myanmar, Sri Lanka got independence in 1948. You see this here? This word, strait, simply means a narrow channel of water. A narrow channel of water that separates two land bodies is called a strait. A narrow channel of water that separates two land bodies called a strait. This is a park strait. Okay, yeah. So, um, this is the southernmost point of mainland India. Co part of the continent, direct part of the Asian continent is Kanyakumari. Okay. If you look at southernmost point of India, it would be Indira point in Andaman Kaur Islands. But if you look at mainland India, not island India, mainland India, it will be Kanyakumari. Okay. Um, Anwar Ibrahim is the Prime Minister of Malaysia. Anwar Ibrahim. Singapore, Lee Xian Lung. Prime Minister. Dinesh Gunavardhana. Dinesh Gunavardhana. Mm, Sri Lanka. Bangladesh, we mentioned. Uh, it is uh, Sheikh Hasina Wajid, that's a Prime Minister. Thailand, a very controversial person. Prayut Chan O Cha. Vani Jairam, a three time winner of National Film Awards for Best Female Playback Singer, passed away recently. In fact, she had just been conferred the Bhat Padma Bhushan. Padma but she did not correct it and unfortunately she passed away before she could correct the Padma Bhushan which is India's third highest civilian award. Bharat Ratna, Padma Bhushan, Padma Bhushan and Padma Shri are the four highest awards, civilian awards in India in that order. Okay. Now Vani Jairam has won three national film awards for best playback for singing uh, and uh, of course um, She's already sung, she's also sung more than 10,000 
film songs, film and other kinds of songs. Hmm? Dada Sahib Falke, what is the highest award in the world of film? So highest film award. This is given for outstanding contribution to the world of films. Okay. And Dada Sahib Falke, the guy who directed Raja Harishchandra, he was the first silent movie maker of India. In 1913, 1913, Dada Sahib Falke made Raja Harishchandra. It was a movie, silent film. Okay. Raja Harishchandra. First movie, the characters moved. After the United States, with which nation did the European Union announce the setting up of a new trade and technology, you know, council, India. This will expedite political decision making because see, trade is a function of to a large extent politics. If there is no good relationship between two countries. In fact, the leadership decides not to have trade with another country, then it cannot have. Okay, you cannot buy sell if your country's president says or the prime the government says you can't have trade relations with them with that country. So this particular TTC is going to expedite, accelerate political decision making, and of course um, it's also going to look at um, sustainable um, development in both Europe and uh, of course uh, you know uh, India. Hmm? So. European Union, how many members are there? 27. 27. How many are there in the Eurozone? 20. The latest is Croatia. Eurozone, 20 countries. 20 out of 27 countries in the European Union accept Euro as the common currency. Okay. The latest is Croatia. Um, European Union President, European Union President is Ursula von der Leyen of Germany, of Germany. Among which nations a trilateral framework to collaborate on nuclear energy and explore opportunities in the Indonesian region has been formed. France, UAE have come together with India to form this framework okay to build this framework i think we discussed the uae france's president is emmanuel macron emmanuel macron netherlands the capital is amsterdam the prime minister is mark ratti the currency is euro there is a film called Amsterdam now. It's 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 in Amsterdam. Okay. Mm. Anything else? I think that should be fine. That should be fine. You know why it's called Netherlands? Because 27 percent, 26 percent of the country's land is below sea level. It's on the Atlantic coast. Netherlands is also called lowlands. Neither means low, under lands, underlands. 26 percent of the country's land is below sea level. Below sea level. So in fact, 17 percent is below sea level. 26 percent is more or less at par with the sea, or just above one meter, about one meter above the sea. That's very low lying actually. SEPI has strengthened the framework for green bonds by introducing the concept of blue and yellow bonds as more new modes of sustainable finance. Identify the correct statements regarding these bonds. Hmm. A and B. Green bonds for sustainable development, especially agriculture and everything. Um, you know, greening the forest and all that. A, a solar energy gets yellow bonds and maritime sector blue bonds okay so i think this is fairly easy actually gm is genetically modified gm is genetically modified sebi was established in 1988 that's the year it was established not given legal powers hmm. it's a regulator of the banking sector sorry 
stock market. Owing to the spread of H5N1 bird flu virus, which contributes the death of around 585 sea lions and around 55,000 wild birds in recent weeks. Peru, this is Peru, the third biggest country in uh, South America. You see, this is the capital, Peru. The president is Dina Boluarte. Dina Boluarte. And um, the currency is Sol. Sol. The largest in country by area is Brazil. Second is Argentina. And third is Peru. So these are the top three countries in Africa, in South America by area. Three largest countries in South America by area. Okay. So Chile, this is Chile. See this is a very thin strip of land now. Yeah. So Chile is the southernmost country on any continent. On any continent. See this? It's almost there. Either, you know, at the bottom right there. It's here, till here. This is all Chile. Hmm? Chile is uh, capital is Santiago. The president is Gabriel Boric. Currency is Peso. P E S O. Which is the first Indian financial technology company to allow cross-border UPI payments, unified payments interface. Now you can send money to or receive money from someone abroad. There is phone pay. There is phone pay. Phone pay um, is owned by Walmart. It's owned by Walmart. But who started phone pay? Three guys started phone pay. Rahul Chari. Mm, Samir Nigam. And Virgin Engineer. Virgin Engineer. Okay. You know, in December, usually UPI is, um, you know, it's a real time um, payment, bank transfer, real time bank transfer payment. It happens between two bank accounts your bank account to the person you are sending it to. Okay. Which Indian company was named in Fortune magazine's list of the world's most admired companies of 2023? Tata Consultancy Services. Fortune most uh, admired companies, top three. Uh, one, Apple. Two, Amazon. Three, Microsoft. So Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, top three companies. Okay, globally. India's best company, TCS. TCS is present in 55 countries. Can you beat that? 55 countries, it has 6.13 lakh em employees. 6.13. Take 6.1 lakh employees hmm? in 55 countries. And its CEO is Rajesh Gopinathan. Rajesh Gopinathan. Okay. Adani is in trouble. Reliance Industries, Mukesh Dirubai Ambani, Mukesh Ambani. Salil Parikh is a CEO of Infosys. Salil Parikh. Vipro Theory Delaport. Theory Delaport. K. Satyanarayan Raju has been appointed the Managing Director and CEO of Canara Bank with effect from 7th February 2023. Canara Bank, okay. Uh, one of India's top five largest public sector banks. Union Bank of India, A. Mani Mekalai is a CEO. A. Mani Mekalai. Bank of Maharashtra, A. S. Rajiv. Punjab National Bank, Atul Kumar Goel. Atul Kumar Goel. See all his 
Hmm? Um, Exim Bank, Export Import Bank, it's Harsha Bangari. Harsha Bangari. Okay. Which Indian university will receive the heritage tag from UNESCO for being the world's first living heritage university? Vishwabharti University. Set up by Sri Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore. Okay. Now, this is also an institute of national importance. This is important to write. Institute of national importance. Okay. Um, look at choice D. This was the Indian Institute of Science is, you know, was started by Jamshed G. Tata. Jamshed G. Tata. And Krishna Raja Vadiya. Krishna Raja Vadiya, the fourth of the Mysore royal family. Banaras Hindu University started by four persons Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya, Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya. Then the Maharaja of Dungarpur. You know this? There is a place called Dungarpur. Maharaja of Dungarpur. Um, Rameshwar Singh. Rameshwar Singh. Maharaja of Dungarpur. Rameshwar Singh. Then, then the Mahara, Maharaja of Banaras. The Maharaja of Banaras, Prabhu Narayan Singh, Prabhu Narayan Singh, Prabhu Narayan Singh, next, and Sundar Lal, Sundar Lal, he was a lawyer, Sundar Lal. India's Lifestyles for the Environment Initiative could cut over 2 billion tons of carbon dioxide emissions by 2030, says the International Energy Agency, which is based in uh, Paris, France. You could write this. Head office, Paris, France. 31 members. 31 members. And headed by Fati Birol of Turkey. Turkey, Fatih Birol. Hmm? You know what's there in uh, Rome? The Food and Agricultural Organization. The Food and Agricultural Organization. In Madrid, you would find the World Tourism Organization. If I say WTO, it could be World Trade Organization also. This is World Tourism Organization, London, hmm. Amnesty International, Amnesty International. Bern is not home to any particular thing. It's a de facto capital of Switzerland. Switzerland doesn't have a capital of its own. So it's one of the only two countries in the world not to have a capital. Okay, the other is a small, tiny republic of Nauru in the Pacific Ocean, which is like what, 21 square kilometers. And this one, um, Switzerland uh, doesn't have a capital city by law. That is, de jure, it does not have a capital. But the place where the government sits is Bern, and Bern is called the de facto capital of Switzerland. Okay. India Energy Week, the only international energy event supported the highest level of Indian government, was recently inaugurated by Prime Minister Modi at Bengaluru, Karnataka. So we could write just extra stuff here. Yeah. Um, Hardeep Singh Puri. Hardeep Singh Puri. He heads two ministries. Ministry of Petroleum and natural gas 
Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas oh. and and there is one more housing housing and urban affairs housing and urban affairs The Indian government set up a panel on the digital competition law to examine various regulatory aspects in dealing with challenges emerging from the digital economy. It will be headed by the Corporate Affairs Secretary Manoj Govil. This is hardly anything to discuss here. This is the current uh, Foreign Secretary of India, Vinay Mohan Quatra. I think he is the current Foreign Secretary. Yeah. This is hardly anything to discuss here. Identify the correct statements about the RBI's bi-monthly monetary policy released on the 8th of Jan uh, February this year. Policy repo rate. We all know repo rate is the rate of interest charged by the RBI on long-term loans to, sorry, short-term loans to the commercial banks. So, repo rate, interest rate charged by, interest rate charged by the RBI on short-term loans. How short? In brackets, less than one year. Less than one year, short term loans to the commercial banks. Commercial banks. So it's been increased. When interest rates are increased, it means see, repo rate increases means that bank have to pay more to the RBI. If banks have to pay more, it will mean the supply of money will decrease. When supply of, you know, it, you know, same time, see, very simple. Banks have to pay higher interest. Higher interest to the bank, to the RBI means that bank, you know, banks, will also try to increase the interest rates on the loans they give. Okay. Now, banks give out loans for homes, for industrial purposes and all kinds of things. So, as the banks start higher rates of interest from consumers, customers, customers will see that their, you know, their, the, the money with them will decrease. Interest rates outgo, interest expense is higher. So you have the money with you decreases. As the money with you decreases, your capacity to buy stuff also decreases, which will reduce your purchasing power, which will lead to a decrease in demand for goods and services, which will lead decrease, um, uh, which will lead to a decrease in prices. And that's a hope behind this direction in inflation. Okay. So repo rate increased to six point five percent to. Inflation projected 5.3%, yes. Um, real GDP growth projected 6.4%, which effectively means that, you know, uh, growth will be, see, the the projected inter nominal, nam ke liye, interest, you know, GDP growth is 10.5% in the coming financial year, which means you have to deduct, you know, inflation of 4% from this, and that is where you will get real. So from the nominal nominal GDP growth rate minus minus inflation rate inflation rate okay so here again it says repo rate was increased by six point no it is not it is the repo rate is six point five percent right now okay. The professional networking platform LinkedIn crossed 100 million members in India, thus making India the second largest market. The largest is United States, hmm? which tech company owns LinkedIn, Microsoft owns, in, owns it. Um, its current CEO, you could write this, is Ryan Roslansky. Roslansky. The current CEO of LinkedIn is Ryan Roslansi. See, the good thing about LinkedIn and Google is that they have a head office in the same place. Google and LinkedIn have a head office. Google's parent company is Alphabet. And they are all headquartered in the same place called Mountain View. This is a global head office of LinkedIn, Google, Alphabet. Mountain View, comma, California, comma, US. Okay, yeah.
Tim Cook is a CEO of Apple. Elon Musk is a CEO of Twitter. IBM Arvind Krishna. Arvind Krishna. Google, you know, Sundar Pichai. Sundar Pichai. Sundar Rajan Pichai. Which Indian company has successfully completed the successful test firing? Has successfully completed that. In fact, it should be has completed a successful test firing of the world's first single piece 3D, three dimensional printed engine, AgniLet. This Agnikul Cosmos, who is CEO, you could write this CEO is Srinath. Srinath Ravichandran. Last year, Skyroot Aerospace became the first private sector company to launch a rocket. First private sector company, uh, Indian company to launch a rocket. Yeah. Sinath Ravichandran is the CEO of Agnikul Cosmos. Which veteran journalist has been chosen for the prestigious 2020 Raja Ram Mohan Roy National Award for Excellence in Journalism? Anne Bhaskar. No, Anne Bhavani Koteshwar Prasad. Yes. Anne uh, Bhavani Anne Bhavani Koteshwar Prasad. Koteshwar Prasad. Okay. This was given by the press council of india the press council of india the press council of india is a chair has a chairperson whose name is justice uh, what's the name here prakash ranjan Prapa prakash ranjan prakash ranjan prakash desai yeah, Ranjan Prakash Desai. Yes, yes. Justice Ranjan Prakash Desai. See this um, Anne Bhavani Koteshwar Prasad Garu. He is, um, he is a veteran Telugu journalist. Okay. And um, he has won multiple awards. And this year he has been given the National Award for Excellence in Journalism. Hmm. One, two, four, five. They're all journalists, TV journalists. In fact, Vikram, Vikram Chandra, TV journalist, is also the author of a book called The Srinagar Conspiracy. The Srinagar Conspiracy. The Srinagar Conspiracy. Hmm. Now one more thing. There's another Vikram Chandra who is the author of Sacred Games. TV series. Okay. He's also the author of books like Red Earth, E A R T H, and Pouring Rain. Pouring Rain. It's one book, Red Earth and Pouring Rain. I have read all the books of that author, Vikram Chandra. I have not read The Srinagar Conspiracy, but it quite became quite famous. For which company has the Tata Group led air carrier um, has Sorry, Tata Group led carrier Air India signed agreements for about 500 new planes worth more than 100 billion dollars at least prices. Airbus and Boeing. Airbus is a European company owned by the governments of UK, Spain, France, Belgium, Germany. Uh, what is that? Something is missing. Netherlands, mainly these companies. India, yeah, Italy also. Okay. So, but this is a private sector company. Boeing is a private sector company. It's an American company whose CEO is Dave Calhoun. Dave Calhoun. Airbus CEO is Gulam Fauri Gulam Fauri Yeah, that should be fine 
which fintech app became the first to support rupee credit cards on UPI, um, bringing a new level of convenience to the millions of Indians who use UPI for daily transactions, MobiQuick. MobiQuick is one of India's first valid companies, financial valid companies. This um, company was started by the husband and wife team of Bipin Preet Singh. Bipin Preet Singh and uh, the wife Upasana Taku. Upasana Taku. Upasana Taku. Okay. Who of the following was recently awarded the Felix Hupo Boini UNESCO Peace Prize in Yamasukru, the capital of the Ivory Coast? Angela Merkel. See, this is Boini. Okay. He was the president of Ivory Coast. Boini was the president of Ivory Coast since in between the year 1960, that's when Ivory Coast became independent of French control. Till his death in 1993. Till his death in 1993. He was president of Ivory Coast. And you know what? He was called the Sage of Africa. The Sage of Africa. The Sage of Africa. Hmm? Yamasukro. But you know, Yamasukro is not um, the main city in the Ivory Coast. Uh, into the main city is a place called Abidjan. Don't write A B I D J A N. And as far as Yamasukro is concerned, while this guy was a benign chap, a good chap, unlike many dictators in Africa, he moved the capital from Abidjan to Yamasukro in the center of the city, in the center of the country, more or less center, interior. Hmm? Yeah. Why was it called Ivory Coast? Why is it called Ivory Coast? The actual French name is Côte d'Ivoire or Côte d'Ivory. But Ivory Coast, because when the Europeans came here, they found, um, you know, ivory, the teeth of uh, you know, elephants being available in abundance in this place. So Ivory Coast. Yeah. Plenty of reasons for us to learn, my friends. Plenty of them. The former Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel, former Prime Minister of UK, Boris Johnson, um, Nobel laureate and former chief counselor of the state of Myanmar, Aung San Suu Kyi. K-Y-I is pronounced C-H-I. Chi. She is in jail now, of course. Hmm? 